Hi guys, Penny Lulu here. Hey, John Frederick. And this is the Barefoot Director. <gasps> Do you hear that? What is, what is that music? That's the sound of Ark Exodus. Ah, Ark Exodus. And what is Ark Exodus? Well, that is a film that was shot in Houston just recently that our good friend Doug Underwood was the associate producer ah, on. Ah, Dougie Fresh from Fresh Productions. There you go. That's the man. The Doug. And we're going to check in with him today on Zoom. All right. Nice little Zoom interview with yes. Doug Underwood. Let's check it out. Well, guys, this is Doug Underwood, who is the associate producer of Art Exodus. And he's going to tell us a little bit about that experience. Doug's been a, a friend of ours for a while, and we've worked together on several different films and such. And uh, Yeah, he's uh, actually been a producer on two different uh, films that I've been in. So I've had a chance to work with him a couple of times. Yes. Well, thank so, you guys for having me. Thanks for being with us, Doug. So tell us a little bit, I guess for starters, uh, a little bit about how Art Exodus came about being, because it's it kind of was one that wasn't really planned at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, um, so a year ago this month, November, I was... Uh, in contact with uh, Charlie G with Cold Creek Productions, which is just in uh, Houston. And they were already working on a feature by a different name with a lot of the uh, same main people, executive producers, main actors, some of the uh, other actors, some of the locations, but uh, you know, much bigger story, much bigger script. And um, they were planning to start filming and the middle of January of 2020. Um, so they, speaking with Charlie G, I got a feel for where they were at and they just needed some help filling in some blanks, getting some additional cast, getting some more locations um, and even some props, I believe, some, some of those things. So we started working on it. And um, first week in January, seven days before we were supposed to go to set to start filming, the, um, the film fell apart. I'll just say that. Um, so it didn't happen, but uh, Johnny Young Bosch, who was one of the executive producers, um, had invested already a lot of time and money. And Arc Exodus, I believe, was a script that he was working on with uh, Kyle and Brian, which are both uh, comic book writers. They have a lot of history with Marvel and the DC Comics. And so this film actually kind of has a kind of a comic book feel to it. Um, once you learn that fact, you can kind of see some of those dynamics. Uh, so Johnny uh, picked up that script and said, hey, let's just literally shift gears. Uh, we've already got some actors here. We've already got people scheduled to come in for all of the stunts. So they had people coming from New York, they had people from Chicago, uh, some were already here from Los Angeles. Um, some of the actors from, were in Houston, which is where it was primarily was shot at. Um, so in seven days, we filled in the blanks and they started filming. And um, it was a challenge, you know, to try to find what they needed, like the lake house that you see in the film had not been found yet. And it's a pivotal point in the story. So we got very fortunate to do that on Lake Houston perfect house and uh, so everything worked out um, and they started filming and what was it uh, Halloween just a couple weeks ago they had a limited uh, release of the film it's technically a short story it's 36 minutes and some change just a few more minutes and it would have been over that 40 minute mark um, but I had seen the trailer couple months before, was really excited about it. I saw a lot of little snippets of some of the effects as they were working on it. And every time I saw more and more of it, I got a little bit more excited about it. So it was really neat to work with uh, some men and women that had been in the industry uh, for a while. Um, you know, Johnny was one of the original Power Rangers. 
So he, you know, had been, he had a, a large um, background in the martial arts and hand to hand combat. He didn't have to wear a mask in this one, so you got to see his face. Um, so it was just really neat to be a part of it, watch the way that they work, their process. Um, Johnny directed it, he was the EP, and uh, he does the lead role. So watching him work on both sides of the camera was really neat and uh, just a good experience to be a part of it and meet some new people and to uh, just kind of network with outside of our area. Um, so it was great. Well, with it being shot in Houston, how with you being from here, how did you connect up to them to get to work with them? Because you're- So Charlie G, Charlie is, so Charlie G is, uh, he was the director of photography on this film and he was gonna be the DP for the other feature. So he was already attached to it. And I had already made some networking inroads with him. And so we had just been kind of talking about projects and hey, I have a production company, he has one. and. We shared some links to some of our films. Um, and then at some point he said, hey, look, I've got this one going. And um, I came on board and looked at the details of what they needed from me, the timing of it all. So he's the one who brought it in. So it's not, uh, it wasn't, Fresh Productions wasn't represented in it. It was just me being underneath the umbrella of Cold Creek. Uh, so that's how I got pulled into it. and. Uh, so Charlie G, some of his crew, you know, did audio and some of the other, uh, Vaughn was the, the drone pilot. There's a lot of drone footage in the film. So uh, that's how I, I got pulled into it. So Charlie G is, uh, is doing things in Houston. That's where he lives. I think that's why they came here to do it. Plus uh, some of the other actors were from this area. Okay. Um, so as associate producer on it, what were your roles? What was it that you had to do with the film? Um, so finding locations was the main thing. Um, they had very specific things that they wanted for both the feature. And then again, because it, it, to me, it just kind of overlapped. Um, for example, the deli that's in there was one that I procured, but it was going to be for the feature, but they still needed a deli for Arc Exodus. So we just maintained that relationship with uh, Nikki over there at uh, Plowman's Deli in Houston and uh, ended up using that. Um, I did some searching for some cast members. Um, in fact, I, missed, I had some conversations with your, your partner there, Mr. John Frederick, and uh, tried to get him plugged into it if it was possible. Um, when they shifted from feature to the, um, to Arc Exodus, it cut down on the number of people they needed. So everybody that I had pitched and, and said, hey, here's an actress, here's an actor. Uh, all of those roles basically got filled by people that were already cast um, in the previous film. Uh, outside of that mostly was just uh, Finding locations is the main thing that I did for them for this particular film. Uh, and then on set, you know, I just was there as extra hands, go get lunch or, or whatever they needed. Um, I wasn't on set as much as I would have liked to have been, but I was there enough to, you know, to get to meet everybody and to see the magic happen of, uh, you know, making a film. Yeah, you got to share a few background shots with us, you know. Sure. Uh, I guess tell our viewers a little bit about what the film is about. So uh, Arc Exodus is a, um, it is a sci-fi drama. Um, there's a lot of hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. There's gunplay in it, but it's an interdimensional story where doppelgangers from another dimension have found a way to use a portal to come into our world and are taking the place of their twin, I guess. Um, and so there is a syndicate called the, um, man, I just drew a blank. Um, <laughs> it is called the structure. So the structure sends their very best assassin 
which is played by Johnny Young Bosch, he's the, the Jacob in the film. They send their assassin to track down these doppelgangers and to take care of them, neutralize them or whatever they need to do to keep them from coming into our world and, and destroying it. I love those kind of movies that like sci-fi interdimensional type things. Right. Like, uh, if you remember, I think it was the nineties, Kurt Russell did uh, Stargate. Mm, so those yes. movies like that, it's kind of what that sounds like to me. But uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, sure. roll the, um, well, I guess, Doug, do you have the trailer set to where you can roll it for us? Uh, I think I could do that. You could. Sure. Uh, let's because there is a piece in there that kind of looks like the Stargate. Yeah, sure. This is true, would. yes. <laughs> and uh, speaking on that, y'all put the film together in such a quick order. How hard was that to try and come up with that particular prop? Because that's pretty well, It is. That actually is one of the uh, one of the things that they ask if I could help uh, try to fabricate that particular portal. Um, there's a couple of versions of it that you see in the film. There's one that's more, uh, it's like just a Faraday cage that they have wired up and it's kind of a uh, makeshift poor man's way of getting back and forth between the two the dimensions. And then you see more that's one that's a little bit nicer. Uh, it'll be here in a minute. You'll see where the, the gentleman walk, steps into it. Uh, that was one that a production designer that's worked with me before, uh, Seth Sonye, was going to do some of the construction and build on it. We were sent some uh, concept pictures. Uh, the timing just didn't work out because they needed it so quick. Right, right. And, and Seth was going to be out of the country at that time. So um, we didn't actually get to build it, but that was one of the, the major things that they had to, to figure out because that was not part of the original film. That hold it added a whole new dimension, no pun intended, to the film uh, to get that built and that structure. So, uh, yeah, that was I wish we could have built it. I actually got to do, to be part of the Q&A with Johnny. Uh, uh -huh. That even though I didn't, but he actually showed those concept pictures in there. So I got to okay. see the different concepts drawings of what they were shooting for so yeah I, th yeah. I think y'all came up with the good representation amongst the ones that he had it's it's interesting because I, I had those pictures and I you know my day job is I do um CAD drawing and I do model work in 3D so I took that and developed some stuff in a 3D model so we could throw it back to him and say what do you think about this? We can build this, we can use these materials, uh, you know, just working with Seth on it. And uh, didn't get to do it ourselves, but the end results look very close to what I had built into the model. So I was, I was happy with what they had. And it's interesting that um, you can see parts of it whenever it's, it's complete in the white room, which you'll see here in the trailer, uh, you see the whole thing, but when the person transports to the other dimension, sections of it go with them. So it's it's there in our world, if you will, until they come back. And it's um, it was pretty neat to to see it fully in the room, and then go out to the lake house, for example, and there's sections of it, you know, laying on the ground. And so the the idea of Sorry, we just had a technical difficulty, guys. <laughs> when you film in your in-home studio. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Is that a cat? Okay. The cat jumped through the light, knocked the light down, and, came and ran through the table. Yeah, I'm trying to give you that cat to you, Doug, but you won't take it. No, I don't need it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this might would be a good time to... Roll the video if you got it. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do here. They're parasites, doppelgangers from a messed up parallel world, invading our world to replace us. We're doing a good thing here. Shadow War that I can't stop what about. The other side.
outside is making a move for a full-scale invasion. If it's implemented, they can open up a portal at any time, anywhere. If they succeed, hell on earth, man. There is something you need to see. Pretty cool. Man, I, I can't wait to see that now. <laughs> it's got me amped up. But so what is that? It looked like they were using uh, some sort of almost like a lightsaber. Yeah. Um, it's funny when you watch watch it being made and you just see black sticks. And then all of a sudden you see that and you're like, oh, I got it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Movie magic. It's pretty cool. That's interesting. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny's name just popped up on my... Uh, on my screen, I guess he's sending me a message or something. <laughs> the irony. It is. He's planning. Uh, Penny, you mentioned doing the the, the Q and A there. Uh, so that one they did with, um, of course, with Johnny and some other people from out out of state. They're planning one for Saturday. Apparently, I just saw it show up there when he sent me the message for uh, some of the Houston talent. So uh, I've been invited to be on the panel along with uh, the guys from Cold Creek probably and some of the actors from the Houston area. Uh, we're gonna do another Q&A for the film. Awesome, Very cool. awesome. Well, so I guess that's Saturday. I'll find out when we get off of here, what day and time, so. <laughs> <clears throat> well, like I said, I got to see the film when it was in the uh, little preview around uh, Halloween. And so I got, I'm one up on you, John. For sure. <laughs> But uh, have they said anything about when it's going to be in wider release or be re-released? No, um, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen. I thought whenever they released it um, couple, uh, last week or so that it would be out permanent, but that was just a temporary um, pass-coded opportunity to see it. I don't know that exactly. I know they've been working on other things. Uh, maybe marketing type stuff around the film. Like the IMDB just came up a couple of days ago. Um, and there is a website um, that anybody can go to. It's, it's arcexodusmovie.com. And uh, there'll be information on there. I'm sure that's where they'll release more information about when the film's actually going to be released. But you have, you have the synopsis. You can watch the trailer there again. Uh, you got all the cast and crews listed there and then some other behind the scenes type stuff. So it's arcexodusmovie.com so you can go check that out. Okay, well that sounds good. Uh, what's next for Doug? Well, I think like most people in the shutdown since COVID, because this one wrapped right before everything went. Yeah. And um, so we had some things on the book. Uh, one film that we had actually started filming last summer, uh, which you're aware of, Penny, you were part of that. Um, we still have some additional scenes to do on it, but not being able to get out on, um, on a movie set has allowed me to do a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. So um, wrote a feature, it's about 108 pages now. Nice. Um, we're just getting ready to, um, send it out to some proofreaders. Uh, we, we got it pretty close to where we can maybe start trying to market it a bit. It is a sci-fi space thriller. I've never written anything like that. Uh, and then a couple of other shorts I had ideas for are now in script form. So um, it's been a good opportunity to write, but by the end of the year, we hope to uh, finish that one film that we started last summer and then we have another script that we're probably gonna to try to do early uh, 2021, which is a, a short comedy written by Seth Sonye called Finch. And um, it's kind of in the vein of a, a key and peel type of skit. Oh, nice. Um, so just, just a really funny, fun film to do and something that we've kind of had on the back burner for a while. So, and we're gonna to try to do it again with all local talent all local crew, 
Um, we'd like to try to do that, at least one of those types of projects every year if we can. And we were doing pretty good for the last three years, uh, but this one's kind of, uh, you know, put us behind with the, the shutdown and everything. I mean, we did three last year. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Last year was a mega year that we did three. And then COVID this year has just really kind of messed us up. I know it. So we got some ground to make up, but um, we're just doing what we can while we're down and stuck in our houses and hopefully we can get back out there and make a movie. Yeah, I think Seth's got me down for script supervisor, maybe with Giz. I think that's it. true. That's what I hear. Yeah, that's that that that's what he said. So we'll see if that happens. Mm -hmm. I think we we found him a location. I don't know if y'all found the rest of them, but I found him a really good location that I think y'all will enjoy filming at. Yep. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I uh, I like to watch a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and uh, every time I watch one, I'm like, I want to go make a movie. <laughs> And everybody's like, let's go make a movie. You got to get back out there and do it. So it's uh, every time I, I miss everybody's trailers, it's making me get the hits like, I want to get back behind the camera. <laughs> That's uh, right. And then last night when we did the uh, cast and crew panel after we did the watch party, you know, it seemed like everybody is on board that if we did come up with some other scripts for right. They all seem like they would be nice. So. That would be nice, yes. Keep it going. <laughs> well, thank you, Doug, for being with us today. And sure. uh, you know, we're, we're here when you need us. Yeah. And right. um, let's get back on set. Yeah. I'm ready. I know John's <laughs> ready. I know you're ready. Hey, and we appreciate your creativity and uh, for coming up with stuff to do locally and for supporting local talent and local filming in our area we appreciate you well i appreciate that you know thank you for having me <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us <laughs> so that was kind of cool how'd you like that yeah that's cool looks like a cool <laughs> film so uh i'm excited to check it out and uh, i would imagine anyone else who saw the trailer is going to be excited as well looks like a cool sci-fi film which i'm totally into sci-fi and that really looks awesome uh, and I got to admit, I got a sneak peek of it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, of course you did. Be jealous. <laughs> yeah, but that's what happens when you know the producers. Uh, you get some uh, some cool backstage perks. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed our interview mm -hmm. with Doug today. And uh, we're going to bring you some more interviews real soon. Stay tuned to Barefoot Director for yes, more. That's it. And I'm Penny Lillard. John Frederick signing off. And this has been the Barefoot Director. Bye, guys. <laughs>